so this is my second shaving for video. I'm going to um, show you guys how to shave really short fur. So I usually use the super short fur for faces, fingers, and toes. Um, and the, the medium pile for just like other pieces. <laughs> so this is the same Lux Shag as I did for the medium pile, but this one isn't brushed out. I brushed that one out. I brushed the previous pile out before I started shooting the video, so it looked really smooth. But this is what that fur looks like when it's not brushed. It's really kind of gross looking. <laughs> um, so uh, brushing it out before shaving helps a ton, especially with this weird, long, coarse Lux Shag fur. Uh, and I also just want to show again, if you didn't see my previous video, I use the Andis um, Ultra Edge or Pro Pet clippers. They have two speeds, you can do the slow, which I never use, um, but then it has the fast. And I always use the fast speed, I don't really know what the second slower speed's for. And for medium pile, I use the 4FC blades, and for this really short pile that I'm going to do, use a 7FC. With Lux Shag, it's kind of hit or miss if you can really go this short because some Lux Shag furs are super, super thin. And if you go this short, then you're going to see the backing. And it really depends on how badly you need it short and how bald the fur is. So if you have a Lux Shag fur and you need it really short uh, for a certain piece, it's good to kind of look at the back and see how sparse the fibers are. Or um, you can kind of pull it and see what it looks like and if you see a lot of backing and pulling it then I would definitely test a piece out to see if you can go that short. I really wish that Andis made six FC blades because I have a five and the five is good but it still kind of leaves faces a little bit shaggy and I, I really like the super short smooth look but I have I have shaved a face down to five and it's been okay um, but if they had sixes <laughs> it'd be probably the perfect length, where it's not too short but not too long. But anyway, um, so this, this, these clippers, you can just pop the blades off, which is really nice. So I'll change out to my seven. Like I said in the last video, when you're shaving, uh, make sure your clippers and blades are well oiled and cleaned, ready to go, and uh, make sure they're not warm. I have never used the cooling spray on these, on these blades when I'm shaving because I'm always afraid that it's going to leave kind of a, an oily, yucky mess behind on the fur. So that's not something I've ever tried. Usually when my clippers are getting too warm, I just turn them off, go do something else, and then come back after they're cool, I'll take the blade off. But, um, I don't know, I've, I've run blades for hours. <laughs> Probably longer than you're supposed to, and I've never melted fur with a really hot blade, so I don't know if that's actually an issue or not. If anyone has melted fur with a really hot blade, please let me know, because I'm very curious if that's something that can happen. Because I know that um, plastic fake fur can be really sensitive to super high heat. So before I do any kind of shaving, I brush, 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 brush the fur, because it makes shaving a lot easier on your clippers. And push hard when you're brushing too, so that you make sure you're getting down to the backing, especially when you're going as short as I'm about to, because we are going to go just to the backing on this fur. Brush it really, really well. This particular slicker brush has ends of it coated in some kind of plastic so it's not it's not pokey it doesn't hurt me when I touch it um, I don't know if that actually makes any kind of difference where it's better on the fur or not but I like it just in case because I know sometimes left shag backing can be really sensitive so I'd rather not be scraping the backing with something super sharp so I've switched over to this type of slicker brush So, um, I trace all my pattern pieces out on my piece of fur first, cut it out from the big piece so that it's not sliding all over the place, and then I shave. I don't like shaving after all the pieces are cut out because if you cut out a piece and then shave it, it's really, really hard to get the edges with your clippers. Uh, clippers don't, I don't know, I've had a problem with it, uh, shaving edges 
to where they're nice and, and the same length. So usually when I uh, trace my pieces onto a piece of fur like this, I try to leave a gap between the edge and the piece because this edge won't really shave. And then if you try to run a blade over the edge, you can A, cut the piece of fur, um, or if you only get the fur fiber, or cut the fur backing, sorry, not, of course you're gonna cut the fur, um, but you can cut the fur backing if you kind of like sh shove your blade along the edge. And um, secondly, if you don't hit the backing, for some reason the, um, the blade will cut edge fur really, really short because of probably the angle that you're doing it at. So uh, I just leave that, leave a gap so I don't have to worry about it at all. And usually my pieces are nice and nice and smooth. Okay, so let's see. All right, so this is gonna be really nice. I love shaving super, super short fur. It's for some reason a lot easier than doing the medium pile stuff. And usually the first pass is super satisfying because it comes off in one big chunk. Um, so here we go. a big clump. It's kind of funny. So I always do an initial pass and get as much of the longer fibers off as I can. I'm not doing any kind of smoothing or detailed shaving and just kind of dragging the blade along and letting it cut the fur fibers short. Depending on the fur that you're shaving, down to be this short. Um, some people actually go to the medium pile first and then go down to the short pile. So it's just easier on the blades, especially if there's a super thick fur. But left shag is thin enough where I found that I don't have to do that. And shaving down to a medium pile is a pain in the butt, so just skipping that step all together is really nice. So when I'm usually, when I'm done shaving, you see like blades just get gunked, lots and lots of fur. So I like to shake the blade out, tap some of the fur out of it so that it's not getting as gunked up. Okay, so then I have this big, nice pile of super long fibers. Just scoop up and throw it. So this is after my first pass. Kind of looks like it was hit with a lawnmower, which is fine. So it's not going to be the final, final fur by any means. But after the first pass, taking a slicker brush to it, it's good. Just get it all pushed out. As many of the loose fibers off as you can. Empty the slicker brush. It's going to be really full. And then from here on out, I'm just passing my blade along the fur as many times as I need to until I'm barely removing any fur. Oh, one question I've also gotten before is do I shave against the grain? I actually haven't ever done that before. So unfortunately, I can't say if that's a good method or not just because I haven't ever tried it probably should experiment just to see how it goes, but I've always just shaved with the green.
And see, even after the first pass, I'm still getting a ton of, of fur coming off. So I really didn't even get close to how short the blade can go. Cool down a little bit, clean the mess up, do a good brush. Now we're getting much, much closer to our desired length, and the shave lines are starting to disappear. I, I have people ask me all the time, well, how many passes do I need to usually do to get the fur down to the length that I want? And Honestly, it's kind of hard to estimate. It just depends on how you shave, um, what materials you're using to shave, and how short you're going, and how badly you want to get rid of the shave lines. The more passes you make, the, the smoother the fur is going to be. So, um, I mean, I guess I could technically stop here. It's pretty short, but there are some still a little bit of high spots, and if I were to press the blades into the fur enough, I would still be getting a lot of fur out. And down here is, I have to still fix that, but there's not really many pattern pieces down here. So I don't have to go all the way, which is nice. Um, but you can see that there's, I don't know if they really show up in the video very well, but you can see that there's really teeny tiny lines in here. And that's from the slicker brush, but also from my shaper blades. So the more passes that I make on this piece of fur, the harder it's going to be to see those lines. <clears throat> So I definitely have a decent amount of shaving left. So shaving fur really just takes a bunch of patience. If you want it to be super smooth, it's going to take more passes than saying, oh, well, it looks like it's pretty good, and then stopping there. So if you want super smooth fur, patience is key. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I'm not speeding up my shaving process. Because I know a lot of people have asked me you know, how long does it take to shave fur and, and how many passes and such. So I really like to just show how long it takes me personally to do a piece this size um, and the result that I get. So that you guys can kind of get a realistic feel for how long this process takes. So if you want, you can definitely skip ahead in this video because it's we're just going to be a lot of me doing this. <laughs> a lot of you just shaving away. And then you're welcome to skip to the end if you want to see what the result is. Shaving just kind of a bunch of boring back and forth passes like this. Um, and that just is something that you should really try not to do is stick your blade straight down into the fur. Um, sometimes if I'm, going, if I'm going really fast, I accidentally do it. But thankfully I've been doing this long enough that if I do accidentally stick my blades down into the fur, it doesn't cause any kind of a problem. But when I was really new with shaving, sticking my blade directly down the fur like this would cut it all the way to the back end, and then I'd have to completely, completely redo whatever piece it was that I messed up. So you just gotta be careful. And, uh, oh, another good tip is um, keep your piece is small that you're shaving, this piece is probably on the bigger side for me. Um, just because you can see as I am shaving from the bottom, it pulls, stretches, um, it pumps up a lot, and that can cause it in spots. So if you have a smaller piece of fur, it's easier to control. Okay, so I pretty much have the top of this piece 
as short and smooth as I want it, so now I'm going to start focusing on the bottom. I like focusing on small areas of fur when I'm doing a really, really short pile. And then going over the whole piece at the end, just to make sure everything is the same, same length. And be careful when you're shaving on edges, too, because you can actually cut straight through the backing with your blades if you hit it at a certain angle. And you do not want to do that. Because you can cut through the pattern piece that you spent a ton of time smoothing out and have to redo the whole piece. My blades are warm, but they're not hot yet. Which is good. After fur shaving days, after cleanup, I spend a lot of time vacuuming off every surface in my living room. <laughs> I don't really have like a designated workroom. Um, I have a room where I keep all my supplies stored so that it's away from the animals. We have two cats and a dog, and I don't want anything getting into my fur supplies and my foam and stuff. But that room is not big enough to store stuff and work in, so I pretty much work all over the house. Someday I will have a designated workspace. But for right now, this is just... Okay, so I think that I'm pretty much done because now I'm barely getting any fur off when I shave and I actually try to clean off my blades and then brush this piece out. Probably barely get anything. So let's do that. So that's how I, I can tell when I'm pretty much at the, the end of shaving a piece. So many fur fibers, um, but I can tell I'm getting close to the end of a piece when I push my blades or I apply pressure to my shaver um, and I'm barely getting any anything. But see, my shaver really doesn't like to get edges, um, so it's a good thing that none of my pattern pieces go to that edge because all that fur is still pretty long. Okay, so I'm probably going to do just one or two more passes. See, I'm barely getting anything now. And that's how you can tell you are at the end. Super exciting. <laughs> And shorter fur tends to show high spots um, more clearly. So if you see any spots that are high, just take your blade over there and push on it. Oh yeah, this is nice and smooth. Another little tricks if, you're, if you can't get the furs off of, out of your slicker brush, I also use a metal comb. Just run it through there and it pulls all the furs out. I actually really prefer using a metal comb to brush um, because it pulls out fewer fibers than a slicker brush does. Like when you're brushing like a completed suit, I usually like to use one of these. 
especially if you have luck shags, that stuff tends to um, shed quite a bit. Just preserves the pile of your fur. Unfortunately, fur suits don't last forever. Because the fur doesn't grow back when it, when it sheds. Um, gosh, this is really stinging. It's just fibers everywhere all over my arms. Ugh. Definitely one of the messier parts of making fur suits. There. I guess it's between this and foam carving. But at least the foam fibers can't get don't can't get in your lungs. But okay, yeah, so here we go. Ooh, very staticky, but buttery smooth. Um, so this is how short my faces go. It'll show the pile length a little bit, but super short. I would say this is this is definitely shorter than seal fur. Um, if I were to use seal fur on a face, I would shave that down too, because I think it's a little too fluffy. But then my next step would be to um, make an exacto blade. And then cut pieces out. So I'll cut one out so I can show you guys. Oh, this blade's starting to get really dull. I only have one more, this color, and then one more color to cut out for Z. So this blade's been doing a lot of cutting today. Well, Z's head. Everything else on Z's done. Wearing these, wearing this mask is a have a love hate relationship with it because it's kind of harder to get air into and it makes my face really hot. Um, but there's one one piece you can see the whole thing is all the same length. Um, one thing I like to do after I'm done shaving is just shake the piece out. I'll just shake it out under the table so those aren't the fibers aren't flying around my face as much, getting into my eyes. Um, but I really like to, to, to fluff around and, and shake pieces out once they're cut out so I can get rid of as many loose fibers as possible so that when I'm sewing at the sewing machine, I don't wear a mask. But yeah, here we go. So there are my shaving tips. If you guys have any more questions, definitely feel free to ask. Um, these videos are going to be posted on Patreon first, and then maybe after a week or so I'll post them elsewhere, um, or maybe like clips or something for you guys. So um, if you have any other questions about shaving, definitely ask me. I still kind of feel like I'm somewhat newish to making fursuits. I really haven't made that many yet, but uh, I can definitely share what I do. and It's probably not the perfect way to do it, but it definitely is a way that works for me anyway. So feel free to ask any questions or share your own shaving tips, especially if it's something that's different that works a little bit better than this method. I'd love to hear it. I love uh, sharing, I guess, like trade secrets is what you would call them. So feel free to, to let me know how you do your shaving too. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.